another year of Clutch Baseball. I'm Sean. And I'm Ashley. And if you're new to us, that's what this video is all about. Today in this video, we are going to be unboxing the starter set as well as Expansion 1 and Expansion 2. But first, what is Clutch Baseball? Clutch Baseball is a fantasy baseball card game entering its fourth year on the market. What is a fantasy baseball card game? It's a board game designed for two players where you build a 26-man roster and a 50-card strategy deck that will help you throughout the game. Set your coaching and choose your stadium card. The Clutch Baseball community plays with family and friends and in online leagues on Discord. Clutch Baseball has even hosted in-person tournaments with players from all over the U.S. Clutch Baseball 2020 offers 420 players, 86 strategy cards, 30 stadium cards, and 14 new coach cards to choose from. We will offer new cards throughout the year in the form of expansion packs and will be featuring special LE cards that come in packs, featuring career best seasons and legendary players. But first, let's show you what you can get in this year's starter set. Okay, so we're going to start off with first unboxing here is our two player starter set. So we're going to put the expansions away for later. Um, those are all the other players that obviously aren't on the two created teams in the starter. But what we're going to do is open this up first. So two player starter set. Read the back, it's got some examples on it. It says 26 man rosters uh, representing all 30 teams, 50 strategy cards. So what we're gonna do is we first thing we take out is the gameplay mat. So it comes with a paper mat. And as you can see on the table, I have a rubber mat. You can purchase your own rubber mat on our website. Um, we'll just put this to the side, but all starter sets do come with a paper game mat for you to set up. <clears throat> Another thing that you can check out on the website is uh, scorecards. You can print one out under rules and basic scorecard. So first thing when we open up our starter set, we have um, deck A and deck B. It comes with a 20-sided dice, and this is kind of what you're gonna use for a majority of the game. And then we have what we call over here our power die. This is 24-sided dice. These two I'll give to you. It only comes with one set. You can buy another set on there if you want. We have deck A, I'm gonna hold on to. And then deck B, if you wanna start opening that up. Deck A over here, it says, take me out to the board game. This deck contains 26 player cards. That's the new rule in the MLB this year. Comes with three coach cards. These are new to the game this year. And comes with one stadium card and 25 strategy cards. On the back of the cards this year, it has um, different colors on here. So if we're looking at our purple, these are our coaches cards. There are three types of coach cards. The bench coach, pitching coach, and hitting coach. They stay separate from strategy cards because you can use them at any point in the game. These cards are more advanced though, so let's put them aside till later. At some point, you know, I'm just gonna put them over here for now. Next, we have our stadium card. Um, let's just go with this stadium for now, it's Houston. Place our stadium card that goes right at the top of the play mat up here. The rest, we have our player cards. So these are our 26 players. You know, I'll lay them out over here. We'll go through those in a minute. And we have our cards with gray on the back. These are our strategy cards. At any point throughout the game, they have triggers on here. They say play up top. So you can either play before the pitch, play before the start of half inning. So these are gonna affect the game in some way. So we're just gonna put these over here where it says strategy for now. We'll put these all face down, we'll shuffle those in a minute. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break my team up. So it's broken up into essentially three different categories. It's either gonna be a starting pitcher, is right up top here, it says SP for starting pitchers. So I'm gonna make a pile of my rotation, my starters. So Matt Hall, another starter. And any batters, I'm just gonna start laying down here right now to start off and we'll start figuring out next. So right here, he is an RP, so that's relief pitcher. So you have a starting pitcher pile and then a relief pitcher pile. And then I'm just gonna put batters down here. So let's break this up. Okay, so once you've got them broken up in different categories, you're gonna take all your relievers and you're gonna move them to the bullpen first. Easiest way to break it down, so put all of them out there. Your starting pitchers, or pitching rotation, will be used from the highest to lowest salary. Salary is located on the bottom right of the card with a money bag logo next to it. Only one starting pitcher will be used per game by each manager, so the rest can go to the bench. If you're playing a season or in a league, you will alternate between starting pitchers each game. If you're playing a pickup game just for fun, you can roll for which pitcher is used. And we're gonna go with starters number one for this game. So I, I have Garrett Cole for this game. So he's gonna come out and what I'm gonna do- Oh, your best starter. Yep, so your best starter. So for you, that would be Steven Strasburg. So I'm gonna take my other five starting pitchers. Upset. And I actually, yep, I'll just put them together and I'm put them face down on your bench. 
relievers can come in at any point during any game. Um, starters, you can't do that. Um, let's roll a dice. So let's roll a 20-sided dice for who's going to be home. So you roll first. So nine. I got a seven. So you rolled higher, so you're going to be home. So I'm going to put Garrett Cole under Steven Strasburg here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to see what batters are in our lineup. And yes, we're going to fill out our scorecard there. And you can fill in Garrett Cole and Steven Strasburg on your scorecard right there. While she's filling that out, what I'm going to do to break my lineup down first is I need to set up nine positions. So first, um, you can even break them into infielders, outfielders, and you know, catchers if you want. Sometimes I like to play on the field and I'll actually lay them down, or I'll lay my catcher here. Uh, this guy can play all over. Let's say, let's say, you know, let's move him to shortstop, and you can fit them in their positions on the field. They can play all the positions that are on the left. Correct. So good, good thing to bring up this year. He has all different fielding ratings for every position, so he can play all those positions. That's new this year. So I'm gonna move my catcher here. Um, let's keep. I'm gonna keep setting up on the board over here. And then you gotta pick a designated hitter. So my designated hitter is gonna be Marlon Gonzalez, unless he thinks, you know, when you're setting your position players, what you wanna do is you wanna look at their defense and see, okay, Marwan Gonzalez, he's a plus four in left field. Do I wanna play him in left field over Andrew Benatendi, who's a plus two? So that would actually be smarter, so he has better defensive rating. And we're gonna, we're gonna get into our defensive breakdowns in a minute, but just one thing to think about when you're setting your lineup. So I'm gonna move him here, and I'm actually gonna move Benatendi to my DH. So once you have your nine players that are going to be in the lineup, and what you want to think about when you're creating your lineup, just like real Major League Baseball players do, it has their handedness on here. So Marwin Gonzalez is a switch hitter. Um, it says S up top. Oscar Mercado, right-handed batter. Altuve, right-handed batter. Drury, right-handed batter. So everyone's got their handedness on there. So when you're creating your lineup, the two things you want to think about is you want to balance your lefties and righties, because that's a big thing in our game, is matchups. So think about lefties and righties alternating in your lineup, and you want to have your high on base guys. So the biggest thing with each batter, as you can see, is the big number right in the middle of the card. There's a 9, there's a 12, there's a 10, so the, those are their on base. And that's what's going to matter with them getting the advantage. So the advantage is everything in this game. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just set my lineup here. You know, we're kind of just going to do it kind of randomly for now. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the defensive ratings, which is on the top of every scorecard up here. It's got your battery which is your pitcher's defense and catcher's defense combined. During stolen base attempts, you roll the 20-sided dice and add the battery. If it beats the base runner's speed, he's out. If it ties or is less, he is safe. Next is your infield defensive rating, which is your shortstop, third baseman, second baseman, and first baseman combined. Don't accidentally count your catcher or DH in this. This defensive rating is used during double plays and when infield throws are made home. Last is your outfield's defensive rating. This is your left fielder, center fielder, and right fielder's defense combined. This will be used when base runners try to go for extra bases, and sometimes strategy cards will trigger individual players to make a play using their defense, but we will get to that later. So we're all set up. So since you're home, you're gonna be the pitcher first. Um, you're gonna take your 20-sided die first, so you're gonna use that a majority of the time. The only time the power die is going to be unlocked is either through mistake pitches or strategy cards that activate it. So I'm just gonna bring Jose Altuve up. We're playing without strategy cards to start. So pitcher is gonna roll the pitch first. So four. So four plus the pitcher is in what we call command. His command is a six, so that's a 10. 10 does not beat Jose Altuve's 12, so I have the advantage. So that means when I roll the swing, we're gonna use my chart. If she had gotten the advantage, we would use her chart. The possible results on the player charts are K, which stands for strikeout. No base runners would advance on this. GB, which stands for ground ball out. The batter is out, and sometimes double plays can be turned. FB, for fly ball out. The batter is out, but sometimes base runners can tag up and advance. BB, stands for base on balls, or a walk. The batter would reach first, and some base runners may be forced to the next base. 1B stands for single, all base runners advance one base, and extra base attempts are an advanced rule, so follow that later. 2B stands for double, all base runners advance two bases. 3B stands for triple, all base runners would score and the batter goes to third base. And last but not least, HR stands for home run, the batter and all base runners would score. So me the batter, I'm gonna roll the swing, the six. Six. So six on Jose Altuve's chart is a walk. A walk. 
So he's gonna walk to first base and she's gonna keep that tracker down on her scorecard. Mm -hmm. So she's gonna mark a walk down. Steven Strasburg, yep. All pitchers have IP, which stands for innings pitched. This is their stamina and how long they can pitch before becoming tired. Two things can affect a pitcher's IP, walks and runs. These are both scored separately, but for every four runs or every four walks given up by a pitcher, they lose one IP or inning pitched. When a pitcher becomes tired, they lose one command for every inning over their limit. And the batter uses the power die every swing, a very harsh penalty. Okay, so next batter up, Anthony Rendon. So the pitch. 11 and 6 is 17. So your advantage. When determining which player has the advantage, you must also factor in the pitcher and or batter's handedness bonus, if they have one. Some batters, like Anthony Rendon, get a boost to their on base. Rendon gets plus one to his on base when facing a right-handed pitcher. Pitchers can also have this bonus, except it boosts their command instead. These handedness bonuses can range from plus one to plus three. Something to think about when making your lineup or a pitching change. So you rolled a 17, so it's still your advantage. So I'm gonna roll the swing. I still roll it, but we're gonna determine the result on your chart this time. So a one, okay, a strikeout. So Anthony Rendon is out. Before we throw our next pitch, you may be wondering, what is this X on a pitcher's chart? This is the X zone. If a pitch roll falls in your X zone, the pitch is a mistake pitch, and your opponent gets to roll the swing with the 24-sided power die. Strasburg is really good, so his X zone is a one. The X zone ranges from one to three. The zone is sometimes affected by stadiums, strategy, and coach cards. The last thing you're probably wondering about is clutch. It's the name of the game. All players' clutch is found on the upper left or right hand side of the card. Clutch ranges from negative three to plus three and represents how well a player performs under pressure situations. In clutch baseball, we call these clutch moments. They too are activated by stadium and strategy cards. And that's it for our tutorial video. We got to show you what was inside the box of our two player starter set. If you're looking for the rest of the 420 players, pick up the expansion set one, featuring players from Arizona through Miami, totally 220 cards. In expansion set two, find players from Milwaukee through Washington, featuring the remaining 220 cards in the set. If you're looking for more advanced rules or how different stadium and strategy cards work, be sure to check out the rest of the videos on our YouTube playlist.